The Small Business Show, episode 212 for Wednesday, February 27th, 2019. Greetings, folks, and welcome back to The Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, the show BFA Small Business. Sponsors for this episode include abbyconnect.com slash SBS and textexpander.com slash podcasts. Podcast, that is. We'll talk more about those in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And out on the West Coast, where the rivers are rising, <laughs> but the rain has stopped, so we're okay. Well, that's good. Uh, this is Shannon Jean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you, man? Uh, I'm good. Crazy. But, you know, it's yeah. all on, upward and onward. Uh, and hopefully... Everything's upward and onward except the water levels for you. So that's, yeah, yeah. I think we're I think we're uh, past the snow. It's been like snow uh up right. in Tahoe. You know, they had another like I think four feet. Uh, so d- definitely broke all the records. Wow. Uh, within a time frame of how much snow uh, they've gotten up there, it's been crazy. It's crazy. So, that's crazy. That's more snow the, than we've gotten. Like you got, yeah, it's been nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they got, uh, I think it was either last weekend or maybe we can for seven feet over a three day period. That was like at the lake level. I mean, it was crazy. Wow. Not a, yeah, not not, yeah, no, no not even on the mountains are even worse. Yeah. So they'll be, they'll be skiing up in Tahoe on the 4th of July for mm. sure. So that's, that's awesome. always yeah. yeah, it's always a trick. You ski the lake and then you go ski the mountain or right. vice versa. Right, right, right. Yeah, my that, yeah. my wife told me about a, a childhood memory of hers where she did exactly that. So, yep. yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. That's pretty cool. That's good. That's good. So, hey, uh, today on the Small Business Show, I thought we would talk about something near and dear to my heart that I've uh, been moving a number of my businesses towards for uh, a while now, and that's recurring revenue, uh, you know, monthly revenue, mailbox money, uh, the you know, holy recur- grail of small business. I think. Yeah. 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 I, I do too. And you know, it, it, you see it more and more, uh, any, anytime there's a business that has, uh, a significant subscription base or subscriber base, uh, they also become a target. You can look at companies out there now disrupting a lot of traditional, uh, you know, monthly income streaming businesses. I just put a new alarm in my house. You know, I was paying 40, 50 bucks a month for monitoring. And these companies are like, Hey, we can you put the alarm in yourself and it's 10 bucks a month, you know, this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, y- you know, um, normally I don't like jump us on tangents like this, but I found speaking of disruptive companies for exactly that. Um, there's this company called uh, hub six and uh, I, I'm trying to think of what the name of their product is off the top of my head. I can't remember. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, it's safe by hub six. What it does is you, you know, you have your ADT alarm system or whatever that they put right. in or whatever, and, and you've got all the wiring and all that stuff, and you are saddled with paying someone. Look, I say that that recurring revenue or uh, is, is the holy grail. It's that's if you're in business, but if you're paying the alarm company, <laughs> if you're it's not it, so right, much right. like yeah. And uh, and they kill that off, but use the infrastructure that's already in your house. And, uh, and you don't have to pay them a monthly fee. You can, and they, there's more to it if you do, but really it's, sure. built, it's built so that you don't have to. So I'll, I'll put a link in the show that's notes awesome. to that. Yeah. It's, it's you know, I yeah. go to these shows and learn about kind of new products sometimes. And that's one of them that it's just like, okay, yeah. If, if we're talking about it, I gotta, I gotta mention something. So yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. And so I thought we would talk today, you know, uh, about ways to add recurring incomes, uh, to your business. If you're not already doing it, you know, um, via there are just so many different ways to do it, but uh, you're going to get, all, in addition to that monthly revenue, you kind of create this lasting relationship with your customers, uh, which is just different if you're selling a one-time product or one-time service and, and you're going out. So, and it can be anything from uh, obviously is the subscription model, you know, whether it's a product or services, because lots of products are sold, you know, you go to Amazon and want to buy something and says, Hey, if you set this up on your pantry where it delivers on a regular basis, you're going to get a little discount. You know, they're motivating you sure. to, uh, to do that. Uh, memberships, the, and a few other things that we can talk about. So let, let's start and let's talk about the first one, which I like is service plans. So if you're selling products, you know, that maybe. Need support, need service, whether, uh, 
you know, it's a tech product or something else, you, you really ought to look at offering even a third party uh, service plan like a square trade or something that you could become a dealer for or doing it yourself. Now, states have different rules or, you know, things about warranties and how what kind of insurance you may have I was to just have to say, that, because but, you're almost in the insurance business if you're doing yep. this. Right. You know, yeah, I mean, that, like, let's face it, the, the insurance, the, the whole idea of that business is that you send them you know, or, or they send you, it depends on who's in business. Right. But, uh, it, you know, insurance is collecting recurring revenue for a service that both parties hope to never need to provide. Like, yeah, that's, that's right. right. You know, it's like, yeah, that's you got how it. it works. Yep. Yeah, it's great. And so, you know, maybe you get started by selling a third party. There's a bunch of warranty companies that, you know, will allow you to resell their product and you you get it. But you kind of miss out on that recurring part of it. But maybe you get your feet with that way and then look into how you could offer your own, uh, you know, service plan. And, and you're going to add value to it, right, uh, to the to the customer's experience when they're buying that product. I mean, we used to sell thousands and thousands of iPads and we always had a recurring model that would, you know, allow us to keep in touch with the customer. And we offered it as incentives. Hey, we'll, we'll give you the free, you know, one year coverage or two year coverage. If you buy X, you know, that kind of thing works out really well. Yeah, so that's good. so smart. Yeah. It, yeah. I like your, your comment about recurring revenue being relationship based like that. That is the key here to remember it, it with yeah. it, with all of the things that we're, we're going to discuss here is you have to develop a relationship with the customer uh, and, and your recurring plan can actually be the way to do that. But know that that's your job is creating the relationship and and tending to that relationship uh, in order for the customer to be happy with with the idea that that they are continuing to pay you for what whatever it is that they're paying you for. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I think that the the secret to it is really coming at it from that, from the relationship part, but also from the adding real value to it and, and trying to present it in such a way as like, look, here, we'll do this for you. If you, if you do this, you're going to get some added bonus, even on top of uh, this extended warranty or however you're going to do it. There, there's some, I think, great ways that you can, uh, you know, make it that, make it this whole value proposition. Yeah. Pretty yeah. Good. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and, you know, another one is obviously subscriptions and looking at your business. I think it's, it's, easy to overlook how you might be able to convert some or even all of uh, what you're doing to a subscription model. You know, is there a model out there you could, uh, well, model after and and look at other industries like the alarm industry or the, uh, you know, Netflix type thing. How could you, uh, you know, use some of that, uh, you know, planning and how, how they do sell those subscriptions for your own business? Uh, I think that it's important and it's a great uh, exercise to be able to take those different models and apply them to your business. And it gets you thinking in a little different manner, um, how, how to use that automatic uh, recurring model. And another great thing about it is that it allows you to kind of normalize your revenue. So, you know, it's going to be coming in every month versus big spikes. Even our, our public utilities out here are doing it. Our pg e they have a program, you know, where if you jump onto this, annual monthly plan that they kind of normalize your rates throughout the whole year based yeah. on your histor historical levels. You know, yeah. that's what they want to. Yeah. You know? I, I, um, it would actually be great to get, uh, Greg Scown on here from, uh, from smile, which is yeah. actually one of our sponsors here in the episode. But I had a conversation with him when they moved, uh, their products, it's text expander among them, you, you know, yep. to a subscription model. And he's, and, you know, they, they did it. They were one of the first sort of indie software developers to do it. And because of that, it was different. It was a change. They had loyal customers that had been purchasing, you know, upgrades, but only when they only sent them money when there was a new version. Uh, and, uh, and, and so they, they got a lot of flack for it. Uh, well, understand sure. like that's just uh, how yeah. it's going to go. Uh, but, you know, he he said a lot of these things and he said, look, also for our customers like this actually, you know, and, and you and I say it all the time. Every business is the customer service business. And I think folks that succeed know this and, and really embody it. And and Greg said something to me that, that showed this. He said, look, I really think this is going to be better for our customers because right now we are financially incentivized 
to hold back features that we develop in order to sell the big upgrade oh, yeah. down the road. He says, whereas now that's completely 180 degrees in the other direction. We've got customers paying us whatever it is every year, every month, you know, yep. whatever, whatever, however it works out. And he said, so we need to keep them happy to keep paying us like that's part of the deal. So now we're incentivized to continually enhance the customer experience throughout the term of what would normally have been just an upgrade cycle, you know, and it's oh, like, yeah. that that's really interesting. Like there, yes, it's you know, I say that recurring revenue is the Holy grail and it is for many reasons, you know, you said predictable income and, and all of that good stuff, but it doesn't mean that it's also like, it's, it's not a zero sum game, right? Customers right. can win right. here too. It's, it's, it's not a customer hostile approach necessarily. Some people take that path, but not everyone has to. Yeah. yeah. And, and there is a, an education process and I would love to have him on and talk yeah. about that, that transition because I imagine it was not you know uh, a walk in the park and now that they're kind of on the other side and it seems to be a much more uh, common you know uh, uh, business model for even for small independent developers uh, I think it's it's you know good for him so I'd love love to hear more about yeah. it yeah yeah um, you know and uh, you just look at that I mean everybody's doing it you know. Microsoft text expander in, in thinking about it from that perspective. And that's how you probably should be selling it to your customers that look, we're going to be able to serve you better and really give you more value because we're getting that, that monthly payment. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's cool. I, you and know, then, we we're talking yeah, about ahead. text expander, so I'm yeah, going well. to take a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's like it all, I love it when this works and it's, <laughs> this is not the only bit of synchronicity that happens in this episode. So, uh, nice. it, yeah. So, you know, text expander, for those of you who don't know is a piece of software, uh, but really is a service too, but it's a piece of software that runs on your devices. You can run it on your phone, on your computer, and it allows you to take things that you type regularly, that stuff like customer service responses, you know, big, long things or short things like your address or emails or, you know, maybe directions to your house or to directions to your business, like things that you give people all the time. But you want to not only do you want to save yourself time efficiency, right, but you also want to make sure accuracy, right? So instead of pouring through every email you got to pour through every email only one time and you make it perfect. And then you store that in text expander and you invoke it either by clicking a, a button or you can just type a little, uh, a little shortcut that expands out, hence text expander and boom. Now you have this thing and you don't even have to reread it because you know that you've already proofread it. That's the beauty of this. And it works well for individuals, but it also works well for companies because you can, as I said, it's a service. Not only can you sync it amongst your own devices, but you can sync it amongst your entire team's devices so that, for example, Shannon can, you know, perfectly hone his customer service response and know that instantly anybody in his team that's going to send out the next thing automatically has that response on their system. So it really, really works. Accuracy is important. It makes your business look better and it also improves efficiency. And we are all about efficiency here. So you got to check it out. Go to textexpander.com slash podcast. And that gets you 20% off of your first year's subscription, which fits perfectly into this episode here. So our thanks to smile and, uh, and text expander at textexpander.com slash podcast for supporting this episode. Now, our second sponsor also fits into the realm of efficiency, and that is Abby Connect at abbyconnect.com slash SBS, right? You need to make the best use of your time and your staff's time while also making sure your customers have a great experience. See how well this all fits together? And it's this perfect. way you can grow your business, right? And what Abby Connect does is they have a team of live receptionists. They're all in the same building. They, they're headquartered in Las Vegas. That's where everyone is. And these people learn about your business and then they train the receptionists for you so that when your phone rings 
Abby Connect can answer it for you. You can go about doing what you need to do. Even if you're out of the office, you've got somebody answering the phone and they're answering it just like they're at your business. They're professionals. They're way better at this than any of us are because it's what they do, right? We do what we do best. They do what they do best. And here's the cool part. You get this entire team of professional, courteous receptionists available whenever you need them, specifically trained at a fraction of what it would cost to hire just one full-time person to sit in your office and do this job. And the impact that Abby Connect has had on other businesses speaks for itself, right? They've got tons and tons of reviews. They actually want you to go and read them, right? This is a good sign, right? And businesses boost their profitability because of Abby Connect. When your customers feel like you're there for them and you can answer the phone and talk with them, that means a whole lot. So we know that Abby Connect will make a strong impact on your business too. And we've worked out a deal with them. So. You can get a no obligation free trial with Abby Connect. And then after your trial's over, you can get 95 bucks off your first bill. But the only way to do it is at our special URL, abbyconnect.com slash SBS. That's A-B-B-Y-C-O-N-N-E-C-T dot com slash SBS. Abbyconnect.com slash SBS. Our thanks to Abby Connect for sponsoring this episode. All right, man. Awesome. Yeah, what's, what's, do that free trial. Uh, uh, these guys are really impressive. So uh, really you want to hear? Yeah. yeah, you want to hear how they're doing it? Yeah, for sure. Cool, cool. All right, let's talk about memberships. Okay. Uh, one of the things I really like is being able to offer. You know, if you if you can't switch your business model or if you can't think of things with uh, subscription, you could certainly offer some sort of membership benefit, and it could be. You know, you have valuable content on your website that's only available to members or maybe you offer discounted prices to people that, uh, you know, are paying our members of some club or group or something that you uh, offer. And, and maybe that's part of the value added uh, service plan. I and mean, you can kind of combine these and roll them up together and think about ways that, OK, I'm going to cover your product or provide this extra service and we're going to give you access to this. You know, look at Amazon with Prime started out. Hey, you pay a hundred bucks a year you get free two day shipping, and everything. But now, you know, uh, well, it's not a hundred bucks a year anymore, but it's, you know, kept that free shipping component, uh, which is not f- quite free, but it's they've packed all kinds of other benefits. You know, the audio, the video, you know, uh, the books that they, they put in there. It, it's a good value um you know, service. And you see more and more like movie theaters pushing, be, you know, become a member of this uh, club and your tickets are a little discounted and you're going to pay every month. And you think about it, it's kind of set it and forget it. People sign up and it gets billed to their credit card and whether they use the service or not, they don't really think about it. And I think that's a powerful tool. And uh, uh, it's like the gym membership, right? We want to oversell because we know that, you know, whatever yeah. large percentage are not going to show up, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, I've always had like, I get that model. Yeah. I, I, sure. I, I, I like to sleep at night. Right. So. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> I like to like, I'm not sure that I'd how comfortable I would be. I've never been in this scenario. So, it, you know, I, I can only speak to, to what I think I would feel. But how comfortable I would be to be in a scenario where I know that someone is sending me money for something from which they are getting like no value or at least. But that's that is their choice, right? It is. No, I get yeah. that. And and I yeah. also get that, like the gym membership is is often not about being able to use the gym. It's about hope. Right. I mean, that's like, yeah. like that's really yeah. what you're selling or what gyms are selling people is hope like oh and that's why people pay next month even though they didn't go this month it's like well next month i'm going to go yeah. right and and so there there is this there is a value to that it's just like why therapy has to cost money right you know because that way you forced yourself to get some value out of it uh, yep. it, you know i Makes sense. i i get that but also like, I don't know if I like, yeah, you I, don't want to build your whole model around that. Right. I, I mean, I don't I want to. Cool. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think another way to, to do it too is, you know, there are companies, you know, very large companies, like think Costco, uh, that basically the profit that they report is all based on their memberships, you know, so they may, uh, you know, generate billions of dollars in profit. But if you look at what their memberships generate, it's very close to their profitability uh, numbers. And, 
so in, in essence, they're everything else they're doing is just to pay the bills and to cover their costs for, you know, the tens of thousands of employees and everything yeah, else. Uh, right, right. But uh, their main focus is adding value to their members and creating this uh, experience for you when you go there. Um, that is different, unique. Yeah, you're going to save money, but there's also other things about it. So are there areas of your business that you could do something similar uh, where, well, maybe I sell all this stuff at cost. Right. But it's for our members only, or it's for the people that subscribe to this program. Think about different ways to add that value. So when somebody looks at that, says, wow, you know, that's a that's a pretty good deal. Um, Think about the cell phone industry where now, you know, really want to push this model of, look, every year you just you just bring it in and get a new phone. Get a new one. That's right. Get a new one. Yeah. Right. And and yes, yes, you're paying for it, but it's super convenient. And then they bundle often insurance, uh, you know, maybe replacement or this kind of thing, uh, extended warranties, like, you know, often Apple does. Yeah. So h- looking at your, your small business, how could you adapt that type of model to a section or maybe all of the, uh, you know, the products or services that you're, uh, that you're selling? I think it's, it's true. a good opportunity. Yeah. Years ago, we, uh, at Backbeat Media, you know, we sell sponsorships uh, for this podcast, for other podcasts, for other websites. And, uh, and my partner at the time and I, Greg, we, you know, we realized, well, you know, we bring these sponsors on board. It takes, uh, you know, a significant amount of time, effort to to, you know, show someone what works and build a plan. And OK, now you're in. Right. And you will do a, a test campaign, initial run of three months or whatever. Great. And then middle of month two, the conversation with the customer no longer becomes uh, just about, hey, I'm going to service your campaign. Here's all these great things. Here's what you're getting out of this here. You know, here's either your spots that are on the show and here's some other things we've seen or here's, you know, how your banners appeared and that sort of thing. Uh, it then has to become about, OK, well, now your campaign is is running out. So now instead of me being the person that's helping you now, I am back to selling to you. Yeah. And I've always said, you know, every business is the customer service business and customer. It's it's not a fun interaction when this person that you're dealing with suddenly has to tell you, oh, you know, you got to sign again here so that I can, uh, you know, so we can keep this going and and uh, and and, you know, you can give me more money. Right. Uh, so we came up with the idea of doing auto renew ads and it has worked out swimmingly for us and for our customers. You know, we, we give people a very easy out. It depends on what the package, you know, what they're buying, but you know, no one's locked in for months and months and months at the most you're locked in for one, you know, for next month, right? If you want to cancel, just tell me now and you're done, you know, after next month. So it's not like long-term commitments or anything like that, Sure, but It means that we never have to I never have to chase you down. It's becoming it's coming up to the first of the month. You know, if you don't sign, your ads are going to stop. And now you're like doing a million things because it's the end of the month. Even if you want it to continue, it's a pain in the neck. And so it really, you know, this auto renew thing that that we came up with years and years ago, uh, and it was Greg's initial idea. And then we just sort of, you know, perfected it together and over time. But it really it, it changed everything and it makes everything so much more pleasant. Now, not everybody's on it. It doesn't make sense for everyone. But, you know, for the people that are, it's it's fantastic and it works out very well. And we have long term partnerships. And, and again, it becomes about this relationship with your customers. That's more than just, hey, will you sign? Hey, yeah. it's me again. Will you sign? You know, like that's not that that's not that's not actually we're not selling a piece of paper that you signed. Right. Like that's right. just the beginning. That's right. We're selling something, a valuable thing that, you know, promoting your product or your business, or your service. And it's really nice to 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 use this recurring revenue model to actually make your business about that. Very similar, but but in a different implementation to what Smile did, where they you know, their business could be more customer focused when they stopped having to sell to their existing customers. Like that's the yeah. worst part. Is, yeah. <laughs> So I think that's really insightful in that uh, the the way you present it, I think, is is 
awesome and it's very authentic and you can have that discussion with your customer. It's like, Hey, we're going to set this up. Now, uh, one question I have for you on the auto renew is, do you offer an incentive to, to sign up with auto renew with, or is it just like, Oh, this is the price with auto renew. Yeah, no, it's, it's how things work. It's, you know, we'll, you know, with a podcast deal, it'd be like, okay, uh, you know, and depending on the show and the sponsor, uh, an initial run will be three to six episodes, some somewhere in there. Right. And and yep. then it's like, OK, so what I've done is I've put together this three episode test and the deal is structured such that if it works for you, you just keep going. And yeah, if it doesn't, like it. you know, we, we don't stop talking to me. It's not like we want to hide it like the gym membership. Right. You know, it's sure. Like, of we're, course. We're, the point is that we want enough time to show you how awesome it is to work with us. Like that's yeah, really that's what cool. it is. And then, you know, if you still want to cancel, like we're going to, we're going to tell you, Hey, you know, we're coming up to that deadline where if you don't cancel, you're on for just one more month, you know, it's only a month at yeah. a time kind of thing, yeah, but you know, great. we'll tell them that. And, and it's like, just be upfront and it's fine. But that's a, that's like a nice service to provide to say, Hey, I agree. FYI, you know, you got a week, and then and then, you know, you're locked in, you roll into the next month as opposed yeah. to, hey, I need you to sign again. Like, oh, well, you, you don't have to sell to them over no, and over, over and, and over. over. Yeah. Although yeah. customer service is selling. Yes, uh, but, but it's a, a better. Right. You're but, you're both on the same side of the table. That's it. Uh, exactly. When you're doing that customer service. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but when you minute you have to put your sales hat on, it's like, you're okay, on the other now side I'm back of the over table. here. You're on yeah. the other side. And so I, I love that. And, and I think that's a very good point to really drive home uh, in this episode is that think about how you're adding value, uh, really being authentic and transparent about it and, and using this auto renew feature, uh, yeah, you know, it's it a powerful a lever. It, I mean, yeah. it's, it is yeah. mutually beneficial, but again, it, you know, th- it is not a zero sum game. Like it's an important yeah. thing to remember that just because it's good for you in your business doesn't mean it's bad for someone else. This isn't the stock market. Oh, yeah. You know, someone yeah, doesn't yeah. have to That's lose right. for you to win. So, yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. So another thing that I really like, and I'm going to kind of skip around here in our notes is um, I really like the... Uh, you know, content that you're creating, but taking it to another level. Can, can you create an online course that's related to your business or something maybe, maybe not even related, but ancillary? Is there what level of expertise do you have or do you have within your organization that you could have a, a course that you could have up on your website and, and sell to, you know, subscribers? Yeah. Um, Think about all your knowledge, all your employees, uh, and create a course that you can monetize. And maybe these are just little mini courses that are very inexpensive. Um, If you're selling photography equipment, um, you know, maybe there's a a, a way to create a course that specializes. Yeah, there's a ton of free stuff online. However, you get often you get what you pay for. But if your level of if you're known as the expert, it's like, oh, we're the local photography, whatever. Uh, We're the go to place or we're the go to place for these supplies or whatever it is you have that knowledge and if you could create something and allow people access to that whether it's you know maybe you're allowing it as a level of membership or a subscription or or just do selling it by itself um all of us are experts in something and people will pay. Uh, they, they think it's worth, if they think it's worth value. Yeah, so no, share we, your knowledge. we definitely are in a, a culture now. Society has gotten to the point where, where I think, you know, there's a general understanding and acceptance of value for value. And it's OK yep. to pay, you know, like you said, it doesn't have to be every course doesn't have to be five thousand dollars or something. Oh, it can no, be no, no. 150 yeah. bucks or 75 bucks or, you know, whatever yep. it is. If it's yep. value for value, people will pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. if you have enough, you know, uh, volume, I mean, maybe it's hey, it's 10 bucks a month or ninety nine dollars a year and you get access to all of our content, right. you know, right. however you want to do it. And and I would suggest in the beginning, you know, or, or maybe throughout, you have to do some uh, free content. And because I think that's very powerful as well. And you're trying to get your credibility built up and and entice people to come in and, oh, we are, we do know what we're talking about. If you want to go to the next level, 
this is what it is. It's kind of like that scarcity thing that we talked about in our aspirational marketing episode. Uh, was that a week ago? Yeah. I think that was a yeah, week ago. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you're going to make your content uh, scarce and, you know, to try to get people to come in and, and better themselves, uh, you know, that way. So uh, I, I think it can work out great. The, the whole great. idea, my, my whole purpose of this is just to get you thinking about things that you may not wouldn't consider at first glance of a subscription, a membership or recurring income that you can tweak a little bit and adjust and offer that to your customers uh, to get that, that uh, recurring revenue coming in. It, you know, it with, um, with Matt Geek, uh, one of the podcasts that I've been doing for almost 14 years now, you know, we, as we do here, we create a community, right? We we're helping each other. It's, it's a two way street. We have listener feedback and, over the years, people would f- find ways to thank us for the help that we provided. And, uh, you know, it, like at Christmas time, Amazon gift certificates would show up in our, you know, in our email box and things nice. like that. And it's, yeah. Oh, yeah, it was very, very, I mean, very humbling and, and, and really a nice gesture. And people would say, gosh, you, you know, you should find a way to take donations. And I nice. we stood on the precipice of that for a long time because I was like, well, as soon as we open this door, whatever way we choose – you know, we, we we're locked into that or at the very least, if we try to get out of it or change it, we've got people that have been paying. So what are we offering these folks? And um, it, it, we've experimented with a lot of things over the years. At first, we did extra content for people. Um, we and and it turned out that that was the wrong thing for us. People did not uh. want extra content because they didn't want their stuff like our premium listeners didn't want their stuff paywalled because part of the value is in the community. Right. Oh, sure. And they're like, well, wait a minute. You know, my question. Yes, sure. You know, the two of you are listening to it and answering it. But like sometimes somebody in the community actually has the best answer, which is totally right. true. And it's like, oh, right. We're we're actually penalizing people for paying us, you know, and uh, and and we do offer a. a priority email address. So, and we do answer people's questions. So that's something that's always stuck with it. But really what it is, is we've created this community and we have essentially people that want to be benefactors to that community. And it's, it's interesting when you finally understand, or when we finally understood the value of what we were actually selling, you know, and, and it was like, huh? Okay. Yep. All right. Well, we'll just go with the flow on this. That's fine. But you know, we still try to do things so that we're sure that people are getting specific little different things, but things nonetheless all the way through so that when renewal time comes, they don't decide to cancel. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's great. Yeah. And, and I have donations on my list. I mean, and, and thinking about it, it's not just for causes or nonprofits no. or whatever it is. If, if you're solving problems for people, which the Mac geek app, man, sure. I mean, if you solve somebody's problem that they've been having and they're, if that affects their business or something has been driving them crazy, it's a powerful connection. Yes. Right. And, and, you know, very heroic oftentimes yeah, yeah. And, and maybe like you said dave maybe it's one of your community members that solves the problem but people want to reciprocate want to support the community want to make sure you guys are there every week right so put, having that donation button uh you know whether it's through paypal or patreon or however you're going to set it up yeah, we built our, I think it's again a great way. you know it's you story, built your own. <laughs> story of my life i built my own and i didn't sell it to anybody else yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. but that, that's great and it's something to think about um you know it's not that you have your hat in your hand that you're asking you know but it's like oh if you would like to. And uh, that's really I, what know. it was is it's just, if yeah. you would like to, and you know, yeah. yeah. And it's become a not it. insignificant part of our revenue stack there. No, you that's know. Awesome. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. That's really great. Yeah. Another one on my list is that, you know, I've always, I was in the technology business forever and, you know, recurring upgrades are uh, just a part of that world, right? Your laptop eventually yeah. is, you're going to need another one, uh, you know, your phone, whatever it is, your iPad. And, you know, how, how do you get in that upgrade cycle? And I always sold, you know, uh, trailing edge technology. We were always one or two generations behind because that was the sweet spot for uh, what we felt was a better value for people. And it was also tended to be a little more profitable, a lot more profitable than selling, you know, current product. Um, So 
we took that and, you know, you could continually upgrade people, get them to trade in their old equipment, offer incentives, tell them a guaranteed, oh, it's going to be 70% of value, whatever it is. Um, and, you know, let them automatically upgrade on a regular basis. And to bring it in, they already trust you. It allows them to continue that relationship. Maybe you offer some sort of excuse me, some sort of insurance or warranty program if they sign up for this uh, upgrade program. It's a great way to keep in touch with your customers. This is a big deal that we've been underlying topic of this whole show is you don't want just a transactional relationship with those people. You want them signed up for your newsletter. You want them coming into your location or coming onto your website more to, to use that content or to connect with you anyway. That's really powerful. And, uh, you know, these are just a few ways that you can then uh, try to uh, implement to different ways and, and just think about it. And we'd certainly love to hear, you know, how you're already doing this uh, with recurring income. What have I, what have I missed today on, in my notes? Right. Uh, yes. You know, yes. feedback at businessshow.co. Uh, show us what you're doing or come to the small business support group, businessshow.co slash Facebook and share your story. We would love to hear from you. And once again, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's fun stuff. It's um, yeah, recurring. I'm always trying to think about ways of where, you know, I can provide value that in such a way that it it, it results in this recurring revenue. It's it's a fantastic yeah. thing. It yeah. can be a natural, a natural thing that yeah. your customers will thank you for. Right. It, yeah, it truly can be a beneficial thing. So for everybody involved. So, yeah, thanks for listening, folks. Keep living that charmed life. Feedback at businessshow.co. Thanks, Shannon. Thank you, Dave.